said that I couldn't get that. Okay, so there's the button button now. All right. <clears throat> Proving theorems using similar triangles. The assignment is way harder than the content actually is. So we're just going to go through this together with each other. So I want you guys to do the assignment and have access to all the videos and everything. Um, but I get it. I know it's a complicated assignment. So it says, um, in the following triangle, point E is the midpoint of AB. So they have marked out our equidistant congruent lengths here, right? Point D is the midpoint of AC. So it says, below is the proof that, therefore, DE is one half of CB. Right, they are proving that this length DE is half of the length CB. Um, now, anyone watching the video, I don't necessarily know why green kids would watch this video, but if I go to the board and write on the board, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. Oh, yeah, kind of, because I have this camera there. Somebody might just need to remind me. Um, they'll be able to see it a tiny bit. So they then ask us to fill in these steps. One of the most important things here is realizing they show you the steps to how they get to what they get to. So part A, what they do, what they have done is, or like what has been done here is CA over DA is two, meaning they calculated the scale factor by comparing that CD is equal to DA because they defined the midpoint. And guys, we're gonna use this activity to like start getting comfortable with proofs by really mainly reading through proofs that have been done. Eventually, I will ask you to write your own two column proofs. We're gonna do this in person together. So you can go in whatever order you want. A lot of times proofs are a little bit flexible. Like you can prove A, then prove B, or prove B, then prove A. Like I'm just A and B, I'm just using like you know, whatever. Um, so you could probably prove this first, right? Because DA over EA being two is the same thing. Right, so what I want you guys to understand about proofs is a lot of times there's more flexibility than what you'll actually see in Khan Academy. But if we go back to the given, remember all proofs have given information and then information that we derive from that given information. Because did we do proofs in math one? We do a little bit, right? Or am I crazy? Yeah, we did. But yeah, like flowchart proofs, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're kind of annoying. But you say, like, if I know this, then I can figure out this. And if I know that, then I can figure out, like, so we keep kind of going. It's like the if-then, right? So part A and part B are the same thing. They're just proving that we have a ratio of two. Part C is then prove that the triangle CAB is similar to the triangle DAB. Well, we know that because side, angle, side. Now I'm gonna show you the steps in a second. You guys think about it. We proved that these sides have a common ratio of two. We proved that these sides have a common ratio of two and they share angle A. So through side, angle, side similarity, we know that the triangles are similar. Not that we got told that the triangles were similar and then used that knowledge it's we use the common ratios of two and a congruent angle to say, based off side, angle, side, we are allowed to say that they are similar. But we can only say that after we show that the one ratio is equal to the other ratio. And I'm kind of trying to speak in um, kind of vague terms to talk about any time we see a situation like this, right? We set up the one ratio of sides compared to the other ratio of sides. That sets up our side and side, but we need the angle to be between the sides, right? So then we just have to show angle equal to itself. Because again, nine and 10, you could have done 10 before you did nine, right? Step 10 and nine are, are interchangeable. Um, reflexive means congruent to itself, right? So if we forgot about that, that's another thing that we should probably write down. So then, we're having to prove that the line DE, which is arguably the base of the triangle, and the line CB also share the common ratio. Well guys, we just proved that the triangles are congruent, which are not congruent, similar, which therefore means there will be a common ratio between the similar triangles, right? Like now that we proved the triangles are similar, we can apply any similar triangle rules. 
So to prove this, we have to pick CV over DE. We'll go back up and compare. Okay, CV over DE. Okay, big to small, right? Big triangle to small triangle. What then? Okay, so, all right, I'm going to minimize these to get rid of them. So we want big over small. Which one of these is big over small? Well, CD is not the entire triangle. Right? That's only part of the triangle, so I don't know if I really want that. CA? Okay, CA is the big triangle. The corresponding piece of the little triangle would be VA. Right? So if we say CA, then we need DA. Okay, there we go. CA, CD, that would not be correct because that'd be big triangle over this piece. And while it would be true, if you just plug in the lengths, it's not the comparison of big triangle to little triangle, which is the comparison that we're looking for to match our big triangle, little triangle. So that's why we would mark CA over DA there. Then we have to say what the ratio is, right? Well, CV compared to DE, CV, big, DE, small. So we already said, yeah, it's two to one, right? So we can either just fill in two or you could fill in two to one, which you could write two to one that way, or actually you could write two to one that way, or you could just write two. Then multiplicate or multiply both sides of the equation by so I end up with one half CB. B over two. Because the only way to get to one half CB is to get rid of this DE. So we need a DE on top. And we want division by two, so we end up with a two in the denominator. Try the next one on your own for a moment before we um, talk about it together. I'm going to see if I plug in this USB to go on the control on the network from up there. The cable that leads is like way too short. I know sometimes I say one thing and I do another. I know I said, hey, let's not actually have class, but I think it just makes sense, especially right now because this stuff's so complicated, that we do have our own class. So obviously now we are having more class than what I kind of said at the very beginning. All right, moment of truth. It's trying. This is a related group because when we start, if E and D were midpoints, it's essentially the proof we just proved, except instead of relating the lengths of the sides, they'd want us to relate them there parallel. Right? So, I don't want to say most, but a lot of our proofs are related. So, when they start, they say AC over AE. Can either of you tell me that in a different way of what ratio they've set up? Is it big to small or small to big? Big to small, big to small right? So always try to make it easier in your brain, right? So what they, what they say to us is big compared to small. I really want to get rid of that. So then big compared to small, right? 
right? A, B, A, D, okay, sweet. So we want to prove that these are parallel, and to do that, we can use angles one and two, which they've indicated here so we don't have to say A, E, D, and A, C, D, right? That gets kind of annoying. So the first thing we do is we say angle A is congruent to itself because it's a shared angle between both triangles. Even though we know that and it seems silly, we have to say it. This is where math, although it is efficient, it is also a bit um, explicit. So that doesn't mean a swear word, right? Explicit means like all of the details. So like explain this to me explicitly. Or what, like, so math is explicit. We say things that are silly. So angle A is congruent to itself, we say reflexive, but then triangle AED, right, they're not saying angle, they're saying triangle, is similar, guys, this is just picking the order, right? So if it's AED, should it be ACB or ABC? ACB, A -C -B, right? So pick vertex order, ACB. Pick criterion, why? Right, why are we allowed to say that? Do we have the side? Ooh, well, they did it, yep. So our beginning steps prove these ratios. And if we want to see how, remember we're just learning how to do proofs right now. Um, they're not making us do the whole thing. We use substitution here, and we get to this common ratio. So since we have that, it looks like we're allowed to use side angle side because they did the sides and then we did the angle. Uh, and if a transversal crosses two lines and back to our parallel lines work, right? Parallel lines with a transversal. What would angles one and two be? Would they be corresponding? Would they be alternate interior, alternate exterior? Corresponding. corresponding. They're in the same location, right? Both of them on the top and to the right. I want you guys to try number three on your own and let me know if it's still not making sense. Don't hit check if you're not confident in the answers. But I want you to try number three on your own. Super flattery outside. Now this one's weird. EC over EA. What is that comparing? Like when we're thinking like big to small, small to big. Because we are trying to prove, but like this is saying prove this. What is EC? The extra, it's the extension, right? So they're saying, instead of just saying CA, right, for the big triangle, what if we just look at CE for the extension? So I know they say E first, but I wish they had used C first, because if we look at CE, that's just this extension. Then we look at AE, that's just the original small triangle. So extension compared to small, is this extension compared to small? Yes. So in proving AC over AE, what is that? Well, AC to AE, oh, well, now that's big to small. Right, so now we start by proving big to small. We got a given, our transversal crosses, so one and three, what are these to each other? Corresponding, because they're in the same location. AED, we got to pick the triangle order. AED, so A, C, B. 
this is easier than you guys thought, right? Yep, because we have shared angle, and we know parallel lines, and we know parallel lines, so we know angle, 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 right? Because we've got two sets of correspondings. And then, and I, you guys could figure this out, we can isolate just the amount of substitution, or not substitution, we can isolate the amount of extension on the side by utilizing substitution. Segment addition postulate is another one that we want to make sure that we get like in our head of we can use it. If we're going to substitute a side, we first have to iterate in our proof that side is the sum of these other sides, or these other segments. This segment is the sum of these other segments. And then we can substitute. Okay, so they use this substitution. Now check this out. This is a little complicated. I want to make sure we look at it. Remember when we said that when there's addition or subtraction in a fraction, that we can split it. Right, so AE over AE, this is 1. EC over AE stays EC over AE. So we get 1 plus EC over AE, and again, 1 plus DB over AB. Is there any questions on where those 1s come from? We break up these fractions, and we really do the division separately. Then, we subtract 1 from both sides, and we get the ratio they wanted us to prove that the extension amount compared to the original will be equal to the extension compared to the original. Any questions there? So you've got Parallel, parallel. I would compare the parallels to each other first. See if one of those is correct and then compare the others. Is A true? If these lines are parallel, then ES will equal SQ. Now, what would need to happen for that to be true? What would S and T have to be midpoints? Or at least S would have to be a midpoint. Uh, so I would look at the other parallel one and say, is that true? So PS congruent to PT? PS Q, P equals P, R. Guys, essentially they're trying to make isosceles triangles. Right? If this is true, then we have an isosceles triangle. Are we told that we have an isosceles triangle? Ooh, wait a minute. Hmm. But wait, what's Way trying to prove? Yeah, we're trying to prove the parallel. Can we start with parallel? No, if we're trying to prove parallel, we can't start with parallel. But we do have midpoints. So be careful. A temptation that I see a lot of you guys doing is you scroll as soon as you, well, more so my seventh graders than you guys. Um, but you scroll as soon as you get to a question to, to read what the question is. Make sure you read the top part, especially things like this. Do I need two midpoints? So I can't use C either because we don't know parallel yet. So let's compare B and D. If PS is equal to SQ, PS, SQ, okay. and PT to TR, then ST is parallel to PR. That seems right, I think. Yeah, I mean, tell me if we're wrong. I mean, compare it to D, I guess. If PS is congruent to PT, PS to P, do we care if PS and PT are equal to each other? No, yeah, that doesn't help us. 
So the midpoint, what the midpoints tell us is this, right? The midpoints tell us PS would be equal to SQ. There we go. Yay. All right. Other questions? Remove that so you guys can't see the other scores. I don't know what kind of else we've been struggling on. Yeah, it looks like aside from the quiz, um, we're pretty good. So I feel like I'm going to assign you work for soon. I did not want to assign anything new until we got a chance to talk about the proving triangles assignment because I could tell that it was kind of challenging. All right, well, I'm probably going to stop the recording then and we can just do whatever else we need to. We don't have tons of time left. Um, yeah, anything else you guys want help on, I'm happy to help.